This computer animated character <clears throat> comes from a population. And this population evolved over time to acquire certain uh, behaviors, motion behaviors and anatomy for the sake of locomotion. And this was done through the use of a genetic algorithm. Now this comes from some experiments that I had previously done and I'd like to show you some of those. Uh, these are uh, hairpin shapes that I call walker. And walker has the ability to move its legs according to sine wave functions in different ways, giving it the ability to have locomotion. Now the genetic algorithm I used here is an asexual process. Uh, that means that there's one parent and it gives birth to various offspring. So the offspring inherit the genes from the parent with some chance of mutation, giving the sine wave patterns, the kicking patterns, different you know, different kinds of kicking patterns. And so because of these offspring, sometimes, like this individual here, uh, had some chance mutations that gave it an improved gene set than its parents. So it replaced the parent. And then it begins to have its own offspring. So in stages, the, uh, the genetics improves over time uh, with testing for new individuals. And after a certain number of generations, <coughs> we have uh, improved walking behavior. Now, of course, it's not walking yet, but essentially they are staying upright longer. There's a longer period before the head collides with the floor. And that's one criterion for fitness within the population. But there's another criterion for, for how good it is at surviving, and that's its ability to eat food within a certain period of time. There's a hunger clock that ticks away. If it doesn't get to the food soon enough, it dies of hunger. It almost gets to the food, but then it dies. So there's another genetic algorithm scheme I used for these creatures, which are swimmers. And they exist within a different physics uh, model, uh, sort of a computer water. And the motions of the limbs causes the, the whole body to move in the opposite direction of the motion of a particular limb part. So it requires coordination of, of these limbs. Here's an example of of one that evolved from a population and it has more successful swimming abilities. So the other kinds of creatures that I created in different physics environments, here's a two-dimensional critter uh, with sine angle motions, uh, sine wave motions in the joints, and here's some strategies for locomotion that emerged spontaneously within this population. There's a more complex species with variable morphology. And here's a strategy for locomotion that emerged within this species. Then I extended this scheme into the three-dimensional world. And these uh, creatures can move in any direction on this, on this plane. And consequently, they have more, more genes and more complex gene expressions into anatomy and motion. And finally, I, I extended <coughs> this to another species, which I call the vertebrates. And these have symmetrical morphologies. And the scheme for this, uh, there's a topological sym symmetry, as well as symmetry in the angles, in the joints. One backbone having up to four segments, and then a series of as many as four limb pairs that come out of this backbone. And each pair, each, each limb, each segment uh, there can be four segments in each limb. Uh, that's the most complex one. Here's the most simple topology that can exist within this species. And of course, due to genetic variation, there's a, there's a lot of variety in the topologies and the angles of the joints. So as you can imagine, a great number of locomotion strategies are possible due to the morphological variation. Here's some examples of some still images of, of some of the random possible behaviors, uh, not behaviors, but uh, anatomies that can exist in the species. Now, the genes that control motion are, are, are used differently. Here's a set of genes that control the veer angle of the motions in the joints, and there's another set of genes that control the phases of these motions, as we see here. Another set of genes control the pitch angle motions in the joints. And then an, a corresponding set of genes are used to determine the phases 
the relative phases of these of these pitch angle motions. And then if you combine all of these control genes together, there is a great number of variations. And another gene controls the, fa the um, speed, the rate of motion. Now, <clears throat> of course, with the uh, gravity in this physics world, uh, the creature has lots of interaction with the ground. And due to friction, it has the ability to move. Evolution scheme here is sexual as opposed to asexual. And every uh, creature is compared with every other one in terms of its success or how far it got uh, during the animation sequence when it, uh, when it lands into this infinite world. So there are relative fitnesses among all the creatures in the population. And then two, f two of relatively fit individuals are chosen from this population for each generation. And they mate via crossover. So uh, some random crossover points are chosen and then building blocks from one parent and then opposing building blocks from another parent are combined, spliced together to create an offspring. Then there's random mutations in, in some of the genes. This then replaces the least fit individual in the population. Thus, the population improves in fitness. Now the head, it turns out the, the head, I had to treat the head differently than other body parts. Otherwise it gets treated as a foot or it just sort of has the same treatment as any other body part. So to give more realistic uh, animal behavior, I applied some constraints on the head uh, during evolution. So for instance, head height. If I gave pressures for head height, uh, evolution produced some more upright postures and strategies for motion that keep the head up. And these critters have no balance sense, so they can't have two-legged walking like we can. Um, now, excessive motion penalty. This turned out to be a tricky constraint. If I set that too high, the population converged on, they just sat there, they didn't do anything. Because there's some motion, head motion involved in locomotion. That was a tricky one. Ground collision penalty is to prevent catastrophes of this sort. This is the proverbial headbanger. So things like this, we can get uh, the, uh, the head doesn't collide with the floor. Here's something that's moving backwards, implying that these head motion constraints don't lead motion, they simply modify it. So, uh, for the sake of uh, expressivity and personality in these creatures, and also humorous qualities, uh, I developed an interactive evolution system with, a, with an interface. One can see a population of individuals animated in real time on the computer screen, and here's the ability to assign fitness values to certain individuals according to their uh, aesthetic qualities or personality. These are things that are difficult to determine in a traditional fitness function in a genetic algorithm. Manually updating the generation produces a parallel mating among the most successful ones and, and the next the new population reflects this. One can also change the mutation rate to create more variation, more random variation in the offspring. This is analogous to experimentation, variation of a theme. Um, now, this interactive evolution is essentially overlaid onto this automatic evolution process, which is more similar to the traditional genetic algorithm technique. This is the period of evaluation, the biological clock. And the automatic evaluation regards these criteria, which one can set, travel reward, holding the head up, etc and it automatically updates the generation according to these criteria. And then on top of this automatic process, one can apply interactively select individuals. And this helps to guide evolution uh, more in the direction of certain aesthetic qualities that, um, that the user uh, wants to see. So in conclusion, uh, I hope that these experiments will offer some contribution towards the art of character animation in, uh, in the use of artificial life techniques and genetic algorithms.